still live. We're hello to everybody listening on 1590 WAIV. Hello to those that are streaming on WAIV.net. And also those that are watching on Facebook at, um, well, it's newhopecc.tv. And then click Facebook. And then boom, there we are. Okay? So we're coming at you three different ways today. And we're glad that we're able to do that for you. Now, today we're going to talk about godly friends and the importance of having godly friends in your life. Because, you know, people have friendships for all kinds of reasons. But it doesn't necessarily mean that they're the best reasons. Sometimes people have friends out of convenience. You know, like, oh, there's no one else around. Okay, uh, I'll be your friend because I don't have anyone else to be my friend. So it's out of convenience. Others out of comfortability. I think this is a popular one where someone's a friend because, you know, they don't hold them accountable. They don't challenge them. Just let them be what they want, do what they want. And even if they, they're on a road of destruction, they don't say anything. They're just like, oh, no, we're friends. I don't want to risk our friendship so you can go destroy yourself. And that's okay. That's comfortability. And sometimes people are friends out of selfishness. You know, it's like, what can I get from this person? What can I get? If this, like the prodigal son, he had a lot of friends when he left, didn't he? And then when he ran out of money, huh, he ran out of friends. So you've got to be careful. People start friendships for all kinds of reasons. But I want us to see today that godly friendships are the best friendships. Godly friendships are the best friendships. And we're going to use the first psalm in the book of Psalms to help us to understand this. How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. Oh, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. And here's what happens to this guy. He will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf huh, never withers. Uh-uh. Never have to worry about raking leaves. And whatever he does, he prospers. And then in contrast, the wicked are not so. They're like the chaff which the wind drives away. And therefore... The wicked will not stand in the judgment. We'll explain what that judgment is later. Nor sin is in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Now, these are very sobering words. As a matter of fact, this is a song. Yeah, this is a song that they sang in the Old Testament. The first half of the song is pretty upbeat. second half is kind of like bluesy. You know, like blues. Oh, no, it's a bad part of the song. You know, but the, the message of the song is very important. And it's important because if you're going to be radical, if you're going to be serious about your walk with God, then it's going to take having godly friendships to get there. You know, you can have people that drag you down, and you can have people that lift you up. You can be someone that drags people down, or you can be someone that lifts people up. Now, so far in the series, we talked about, you know, being broken. That's part of life. Uh, letting your daily life be a witness of your faith. Forgetting the past. Reaching forward for the future. You know, these things, it's, it's, it's what we do. It's what makes up the Christian life. But when we get to this one, this one kind of steps on your sentimentality. Because when we talk about friendships, we talk about sentimentality, being sentimental over people. And we're going to divide this into two columns. Like I said, we've got, first of all, the benefits of godly friends, and then we're going to see the non-benefits of ungodly friends. Okay? So right off the bat, it says, How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. That means get bad counsel from bad people. And uh, the word blessed, uh, it means happy. How happy is the guy that doesn't get bad counsel from bad people? Why is he happy? Because he's not in bad company. 
He's not listening to bad people. He's not getting bad advice. See, bad advice never leads to happiness. Doesn't. Good advice will lead you to happiness. I've never seen a person mock or scorn someone and have a smile on their face. You ever notice that? Usually when they're mocking someone or scornful, they're kind of ugly. Because that's a negative action. And it creates a negative countenance. So, godly friendships make for a happy camper. That's what the first verse says. You want to be a happy camper? Have some positive people in your life. Negative people, man, they're going to drag you down. They're going to spoil your joy. So, how blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. You know, hanging around with those, they're negative all the time, they're critical, they always have, you know, mean things to say. You know, it goes on in circles today, doesn't it? Especially in the political arena. Sometimes it happens in the church. You know, it's sad. Never mock another church. Never knock another church. Never knock another Christian. You never do that. Nobody's got it right. Nobody's got it down pat perfectly. And the worst thing you can do is mock another Christian or another church or another denomination because you know what? You're mocking the family member. That's the family of God. So don't sit in the seat of the scoffer. Secondly, this guy is delighted. His delight is in the law of the Lord. And he thinks about it day and night. Delight means pleasure. It means to desire it. Here's a guy that desires to grow in God's Word. Is that you? Do you desire to grow in the Word of God? See, some people go to church, but they desire, do they desire to grow in the Word? I know people that are religious, but they have no desire at all to grow in the Word. And therefore, they're never going to find the joy that they could have. The joy that God wants them to have. They'll never get it. Oh, they'll get some joy, but they'll never get the ultimate joy because it comes from growing in God's Word. When you have godly friends, you're around people that desire God's truth. They'd rather grow in the Word of God than mock other people. Pay attention when you're out in public. Pay attention when you're with your circle of friends. Who are those that want to make something better of themselves? And who are those that are very content to mock others, to criticize others, to always have something negative to say about others? Who are those? Because I'll tell you what, you're next in line. They do it to all kinds of people. They do it to everybody. And they'll do it to you. So that's why that is not a good, healthy circle of friends. You want to be around positive people. He goes on and he says, he'll be like a tree firmly planted. You know what that means? Oh yeah, steadfast. You want to be steadfast like a tree? You'll be firmly planted by streams of water. Firmly planted means carefully cultivated for proper growth. Carefully cultivated. See, when the tree is near the water, the roots go down deep. And you know what they find? Water. And that water nourishes the tree. And the deeper the roots go, the more stable the tree becomes. And the more steadfast it becomes. And when the storms beat against that tree, man, that tree will stand. Every once in a while, we have some pretty bad hurricanes around here bad windstorms, and you see these big, beautiful trees, and they fell over. And you would think, oh, how can that big, beautiful tree fall over in the wind? And when it comes out of the ground, if you look at the root system, it's very shallow. It's got a big bulb at the bottom. It's got a lot of roots, but they're not deep. It takes deep roots to stabilize a tree. And we've got to be deeply rooted in God's truth in order to be stabilized in this life. And what an advantage when you're around people that want that. It's true. It's true. Birds of a feather flock together. They do. 
And you'll become whatever it is your circle of friends are. You'll become just like them. So, I would say then, Dave Therian's words of wisdom, if you want to fly with the eagles, don't run with the turkeys. Okay? Because it's either one or the other. You, you can be firmly planted. You can be steadfast in your life. And when the storms come against you, you will be able to stand. And you know what else this tree does? It yields its fruit in its season. And its leaf does not wither. So number one, it's fruitful. It's fruitful. It gives of itself. A fruitful tree gives of itself, right? It gives fruit. A fruitful person gives of themselves. And you know what the result is? The leaf does not wither. It doesn't fade. We could say it doesn't lose heart. A lot of people today, man, they're forlorn. They're in despair. They've lost their heart. And they've lost their hope. That's why this is such a beautiful psalm. Put your roots down deep. You'll be able to give of yourself and you will not lose heart. You'll be fruitful. You'll yield your fruit. See, fruit always stands, of, stands for uh, the reward of labor. I think of refreshment when I think of fruit, like a nice cold watermelon on a hot summer day. That's refreshing. And that's what people are like who have their roots go deep down into God's Word. They're a refreshment. When they walk in a room, people say, Oh, I'm glad you're here. Not when you leave, Oh, I'm glad they're gone. See, we have two types of people. Those that light up a room when they walk in, those that darken a room when they walk in. And what do you want people to say about you? I'm glad you're here, or I'm glad you're gone? Well, it depends on what you do with your life and what friends you choose to be a part of. What circle of friends? Are they on the same path as you? Are you someone that wants to be serious about God? Then you've got to get around people that are serious about God. You've got to get around them. Because you'll become whatever it is that you're around, right? If you stand next to a smoking fire, you know what you're going to smell like? Smoke. Why? Because you're near the smoke. Right? If you fall in a bed of roses, you know what you're going to smell like? Roses. You're also going to smell like blood. Because there's a lot of thorns in those, <laughs> in those roses. But you know what I'm saying? We will become whatever it is that we surround ourselves with. And then the, the greatest thing he says here, in whatever he does, now who doesn't want to do this? He prospers. In whatever he does, he prospers. That means to be successful. Who doesn't want to be successful in their attempts and the things that they set out to do? Come on, we all do. That's why we do them. We don't, we don't, do, we don't set out to do something and say, oh, I'm going to go do this thing, I hope I fail. Oh, I'm going to go take, take this exam, I hope I fail. Oh, it's my turn at bat. Base is loaded. Two outs. I hope I strike out. Nobody does that. Everybody wants to be successful in what they attempt. And you can be successful when you follow the proper guidelines. Godly guidelines. They're there for our benefit. You know, it's so sad to find nice people that have no use for the things of God. I know a lot of nice people that have no use for God. And as nice as they are, oh man, they could have so much more going for them. They have no idea what they're missing out on because they're content where they're at. Status quo people. And sometimes people like that, they only discover a need for God when the bottom drops out. When, when terror strikes. All of a sudden, where's God? 9-11. Oh, for the first year, everybody was praying around the maypole. Now if you pray around the maypole, they chop the maypole down. No more praying around the maypole. No more this, no more that. Why? Because we get used to the status quo. And only a crisis sometimes 
will bring certain people back to God. Why? Like somebody said, God's not your spare tire, He's your steering wheel. Use Him every day. Let Him guide you through life. Have a relationship. Have Be a Psalm 1 individual who is blessed, who is happy, who is fruitful, who is full of life, who is not sick-hearted, who, who, who is around positive people, who is a positive person, not spewing out complaints and criticisms all day long, but being a blessing to other people with the things they say. And then finally, this person will be provided for. Because it says, for the Lord knows the way of the righteous. They are under the continual eyes of God. How about that beautiful song, His Eye is on the Sparrow? Right? If God's eye is on the sparrow, how much more is it on you that belongs to Him? God knows the way that He's leading you. He approves of it. So these are the six benefits of pursuing God and being in a circle of friends that are also pursuing God. Happiness, you're delighted, you're steadfast, you're fruitful, you're prosperous, and you're provided for. Now, or contraire, the consequences of having ungodly friends. Verse 4 says, Oh, the wicked are not so. The wicked are not like this person. They are like chaff, which the wind drives away. What's chaff? Chaff is the shell of the grain. You can't eat chaff. That's why when the grain is harvested, it's, it's brought into the threshing mill, and the threshing mill separates the shell from the grain. And the grain is what you cook with. You make flour with it. And think of a peanut. The shell of the peanut would be the chaff. You don't eat that. It's like dry and yucky, stringy. But the food is inside. It's the nut. So the chaff are not like the righteous. They will be driven away. Like chaff is driven away by the wind. These people will be driven away by the storms of life. The wicked will not stand in the judgment. This judgment has to do with rewards. There are two judgments. The judgment for the faithful will be for their rewards. The judgment for the Christ rejectors will be for their sentencing into the lake of fire. Eek! It's called the judgment of the great white throne. Now, we don't want that for anybody. That's why we're here on the radio every day, trying to get people to listen. And before I come on the radio, I, I, I offer up a little prayer. I say, God, bring us new listeners. Bring us people that haven't heard this before. And expand this radio audience. People need to hear, yeah, that there is good news in Christ. It's good news. Jesus even said it. He said, I didn't come to judge the world. I came that the world would be saved through me. He came to offer himself as a sacrifice for us. He took the judgment that we deserve so we don't have to take it. So we go to be judged for rewards, but those that say, no, I'm okay. I don't need that stuff. I don't want that. Well, they will receive a judgment and they will be sentenced into eternity without God. Sunday we're going to begin a series. It's called, I Want to Believe in God, But. And every week we're going to look at people that do want to believe, but they have obstacles. And uh, the basis of it is, sometimes we formulate our own image of God, and this God doesn't exist. And when the image of God that we've created doesn't satisfy us, well, then we don't believe. So we really have to do the best we can to not 
create an image of God, but seek out the one true God for who he really is. It's going to be a great series, and maybe, you know, you can stream us online at newhopecc.tv. You can watch the service live. You can download the notes. They're on the website already at newhopecc.tv. And um, it's going to be a series really for, for people that are struggling with their faith or maybe people that have no faith. And they feel justified in not having faith. And this just might open up some eyes and say, you know what? I need to take a different look at this. And hopefully they'll, they'll find Christ and they'll find salvation and they'll find what we're talking about today. A fulfilled, contented life. Okay? So the wicked, you know, they're not going to stand in the judgment of rewards. They're not going to stand in the assembly of the righteous. No, they're going to be set apart from those that Christ died for. And it, the Bible says that the way of the wicked will perish. It doesn't mean they'll be annihilated, but it means that they will go off into the eternal lake of fire. Very sobering. Very sad. You know, we just came out of a spiritual season. The Lenten season, Easter. And, you know, it's a, it should be a time of reflection, of examination. A, t a, a time that, you know, we look at our lives and and see, okay, you know, where are we in life, and what areas of improvement can we make, and where are we with God? I want to offer you three ways that you can apply this message today. Number one, think about your current friends. Are they godly friends? They might be good people, but if they're not godly, they're not going to help you with your spiritual journey. Am I saying forsake them? No. I'm saying add some new ones. Add some godly friends to your life. It'll be a tremendous benefit. Number two, be in a group of Christians that meet regularly. Study the scriptures. Let iron sharpen iron. Um, run things by each other. It's amazing how people can, you know, affirm one another and inspire one another. I know when I meet with pastors, I walk away inspired, motivated. Yeah, man, let me at it. And then thirdly, you know what? This one might sound funny, but be friendly to strangers. You know, down south, people are friendly to strangers. Up here, it's not so, but we can change it. We can fix it. When you're out in public, be the first one to say hello. Don't wait for them. When, you, when you're passing someone, don't look away. Look them right in the eye. Say, hi, how you doing? How are you? Because people need to know that they matter. We have so many people that feel, I think, isolated in a crowded world. And they don't need to feel isolated. They need to feel like they do matter. And like people do yeah. So there's some things that we can do with this message today. Hey, let me remind you, May 12th, we've got Jason Gray coming. Great concept planned, 7 p.m., May 12th. I think that's a Friday night. You can get tickets at itickets.com, and you can also get tickets here at New Hope on Route 6 in Swansea. This is where the concert will be. So it's going to be a great time, $15 for the tickets, and a lot of that is going to support our orphan program in Togo, West Africa. So just by coming, you'll not only enjoy a great night, but you'll also help take street kids off the street, put them in with family members where they can go to school, they can have a shelter over their head, food in their belly, clothes on their backs, and be with a family that loves them. So I hope you make it out May 12th, and uh, it's going to be a great night. Thank you for coming along today, and we'll be back tomorrow, same time, same station, for more of New Hope Radio.